Hello and welcome to round four of the 2024 season one of Roni's Tuesday Fun Race Extra Large in Live for Speed, the 88th ever RTFR XL, sponsored by World Class Lines, broadcast here on Sim Broadcasts. For your viewing pleasure, I'm Peter Butcher and joining me in the commentary box tonight, it's uh, Owen Harmon, first of all, and Mika Sarkin. And Owen, how are you doing? All good here, Pete. Thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to tonight, as always. Mika, how are you doing? A bit tired, I heard, but uh, yeah, you should be should be all right. Yeah, uh, I had a long day. I'm just a bit tired. Just chilling out here and trying to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. That is guaranteed for sure, because we are at South City Chicane Route, an absolute belter of a combination in the LX6 for 66 laps of racing. We've just had a 60 minute qualifying session, which we're going to go through in just a moment's time. It got quite spicy towards the end. The results are uh, quite surprising in the end. But for tonight's race, every driver must make, of course, that mandatory 10 second pit stop, which is going to add a bit of spice to the action. Um, the NX6 is a difficult car, Owen, so we're going to expect some drivers maybe struggling with tyre life at the end and maybe even fuel. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, This car, at the best of times, has a very slidey rear end and the tyres, of course, are very narrow and they are the road going tyres. So, yeah, a lot of work has to be done. And yeah, the drivers, as uh, Roni gave us some intel, uh, we will have a heck of a challenge for these drivers. They have to manage a lot. They will do. This is a really difficult car, especially around South City with all the bumps, twists, turns and barriers. And it's quite a, it's not the strongest car in the world, especially with those, um, you know, unprotected axles uh, at the front. So that's going to be interesting as well. We are on the 88th ever RTFR XL, four rounds into the 12 round 2024 XL season. And yeah, we're approaching the summer months where we should see some uh, some spicy action in the series as things start to, to wear on. And of course, the prize money on offer from World Class Lions uh, starts to become more important for the drivers in the Drivers' Championship, of course. And here we are. It's currently Mantas leading the way uh, on 80 points ahead of uh, Roni, uh, who's got 45. Rick Cardle, Ayub, Zesty, Soini, Unite, Asuka, Boroslav Botev and Rex, your top 10. And we have, I think, 30, or oh, sorry, uh, yeah, 36 names on our Drivers' Championship so far this year. So hopefully adding to that tonight because we've got a healthy grid of cars on it. Yeah, we do. Um, we were hoping for a minimum of 20 and we have uh, exceeded that to 25 uh, qualifiers in total and they're all uh, pretty competitive. So yeah, very encouraging signs. Yeah, Joe Holmes, a latecomer to the session, went on provisional pole with a 109.61 and then in the dying minutes in qualifying, Mantas smashed in a 109.55 to take pole position and try to extend his championship lead here in RTFR XL. Jordan Lavrikov lines up in P3 with Unite and Rick Cardle decide as teammates there in fourth and fifth. We've got some world-class Lions representation in the top 10 with Asker and Pekka Koivinen with the Hemeli for ZFRL. Uh, Zafradis there in P8 and some Bonta race cars as well, 136 and Twin Cam uh, rounding out the top 10 and it's going to be an exciting race especially down into the uh, the Turn 1 hairpin Yeah, we will be taking the uh, well-known South City hairpin uh, to begin our uh, proceedings and of course yeah, there's so much space that the drivers may uh, try and go a, an unusual uh, racing line uh, into the curve so yeah a lot of potential but of course yeah it does narrow at that sort of turn one kink so yeah a lot of decisions have to be made pretty quickly yeah we've got two drivers using onboards tonight we've got uh, the Hemeli and uh, Gabor actually running on board so we're going to see their their in-car views during during the race hopefully so uh, hopefully they have a good start and can make their way around uh, lap one which is going to be spicy here especially with the number of cars we do have uh, on the track just show up the qualifying graphics once again uh, on the second column here we've got Timi Soini, Motta Makari, Lorenzo Zesti, Gabor there in P15 not a good qualifying session from him uh, Yari Katilla, uh, Michael Malik, Stiefler, Roni and Magic and then six cars sorry five cars on the second screen Majester, Badaruk, Andy 36356, Spider-Man and Hermani and everybody within the 107% time um, so we may see multiple lappings uh, with, the, with the race tonight, Owen, because the lap is quite short. So, yeah, definitely going to see some traffic for our leaders. And it's not easy to get through, especially the single file chicane section. Yeah, uh, it probably is 115 seconds per lap uh, on fuel load to begin with. And then it'll come down as drivers uh, gain their uh, mojo. 
So yeah, I will imagine a lot of drivers, uh, if they can withstand the challenge of the vehicle and the track, then the uh, lead lap cars will definitely uh, be uh, meeting them soon enough. So yeah, a lot has to be uh, decided for the drivers who want to try and uh, just, just make an impression if they haven't uh, got the ambitions necessarily to, to win the race. The drivers are getting ready on the server and we are going to be going racing for 66 laps. Around about an hour and 20 minutes we expect uh, the drivers must make that mandatory pit stop 10 seconds and no less otherwise they're going to pick up a penalty. So uh, let's get straight into it boys. Owen take us away for the start of round four of the 2024 season of RTFR XL. Yeah let's bring it on. A very star-studded lineup in the top five here uh, with two Sidus drivers fourth and fifth so that goes to show you with Mantas, Holmes and Lavrikov. Uh, they really do enjoy this kind of car. So let's see how they fare. The red lights disappear now and we begin. So who's got the best of the uh, getaways? Looks like in fairness, Joe Holmes can give Mantas a little bit of a, a peek here, see what he does. Now minding the barriers on the right-hand side. This looks okay to me. Breaking hard now for the uh, hairpin turn two. And the door left wide open there by Unite in fifth place now. So his teammate Rick will overtake him. Top, top, top three are as they were. Yeah, close between Jordan Lavrikov and Joe Holmes going into the uh, downhill section. Tricky right-hander here uh, off camber as well as we go underneath the brick bridge. And Joe managed, manages to hold it on the outside, which is important because now we've got this single file uh, chicane section in. Yeah, and if anyone oversteps the mark, they're going to take a heavy blow against the barrier. So yeah, uh, best behavior, everybody. And it looks like uh, yeah, everyone has understood the memo, at least for the first lap. Then you can kind of take more risks. And now we're heading back to the start finish. Yeah, Mantas already with a two, uh, well, it says two tenth lead, but I think he's even extended that through the second part of the lap. And Joe Holmes has everything to do as we've got Thamuli now going for a run on Pekka Koivinen. Uh, on the home straight, let's see if he goes for a brave move. No, not quite. I don't think he's going to go for it at the late stage. It's pretty risky uh, to go for that. Oh, Lorenzo's going for a move uh, further down. Oh, he's got to catch that oversteer quickly, and he does. Um, and our final boss, uh, Gabor, now trying to battle with Timmy right behind, but um, no luck so far. But of course, he's got his teammate Zesty to help him out. Yeah, Gabor, uh, plenty of room. Oh, what is he doing there on the onboard? He's using the forces view in Lipper Speed. <laughs> that is a unique way of driving a car around uh, South City. Wonderful stuff. Interesting, but there we are. As uh, he goes into the chicane section, Chris in my ear just said it's because you get a better view of the walls. Seriously? I mean, there's a lot of extra uh, clutter on your screen. I mean, <laughs> apologies for that, folks. That's an interesting uh, insight into Gabor's uh, driving style around South City. Well, he's quick, I mean, but what do you make of that? Make, it kind of makes sense since uh, the body of the car will disappear and you'll see much more. Uh, it's kind of wider, like view. But, well, uh, it's Gabor doing Gabor stuff. Uh, he has real, real, real uh, ways to drive sometimes. And there's really? the Emily again. Yeah. He's trying to go for that move on Pekka Koivinen, and, and this time he's got it done. One lap it took him, but he is through up to P7 as he hits the hairpin for uh, the third time as uh, Gabor is now all the way alongside Timu Soinio in out of the hairpin and he's got the place. Yeah, there's just no traction if you're if you're on full steering lock uh, in this LX6. So that was a, a troublesome moment there for Timu. Um, yeah, once he lets Zesty go out of his mirrors, yeah, then he will be able to get back to racing with Mata Makari, of course, uh, looking for his opportunity. Unfortunately, this is the uh, follow the leader. Say, oh, he's dived. He's dived down the inside. And Michael Malik also profits. So, yeah, there we go. He's interrupted my uh, now out of date thought. <laughs> well, never mind. It didn't last long, but it was drama nonetheless. As Joe Holmes is now trying to turn the screws. Uh, eight tenths of a second currently separates our race leader, Mantas, from Joe Holmes. And, well, the gap is starting to come down. Let's see if it actually is uh, over start finish. We'll get an update now. Uh, oh, only just, but there is a slight gain as Pekka Koivinen now on a run. We've got two world-class Lions cars and a Zafiratis car really tight together into here. This is not a place where you want to be side by side. And, well, Thamuli holds it around the outside, but both lost time on Asuka. 136 had a 
uh, a ponder about the position, but uh, he was better off uh, waiting. So uh, he'll have to try again later. We have Mad Jester versus Yarikatella climbing up the hill. And it's Mad Jester clear at this stage uh, in his uh, bright orange LX6. Um, so what he'll have to do now is see if he can overtake another world-class lion. Yeah, fastest lap on the previous lap to Joe Holmes. That's pretty much confirmation that he is uh, making those gains. And as we switch to him, you can see how close he is out of the final corner. Obviously, that gap will expand slightly as they make their run down to turn one. But we'll get another update on the gap. Uh, it went up slightly between sectors one uh, to the sector one line. Um, but yeah, let's see how we're doing with the time across start finish. It's the second checkered line. This one. And yeah, it's down again. So ebbing and flowing, Owen. I mean, we've got a, a, a bit of a concertina with these two. Yeah, it's exactly what you want to see. Uh, the fact that neither driver has a, a clear advantage. Um, so we'll monitor that as best we can. But of course, uh, Tahmuli still working hard to try and uh, better Arska here and put himself in range of the top five. Of course, uh, they've all pulled well clear. They're nearly at the end of the the straight so he's gone for the inside line here folks and into the turn three they will go breaking now so there we go it's a lovely pass completed by Tamuli watch out for a dive bomb yes that's perfect yeah great stuff and clean pass clean as a whistle as uh, everyone makes their way through the chicane once again this is so difficult to follow other cars through there so uh, very very well done to the entire field pretty much on the opening lap to to do that without incident as uh, yeah this is kind of the second pack it's now Thamuli who's leading this kind of second pack of cars as Lorenzo has he gained another place no he's lost a place hit the wall and lost a place to Motta McCarry so that's down a place for Lorenzo to P14 now yeah it's disappointing to see but um, yeah there's still enough time to uh, stay the course and keep pushing um, so yeah, let's see, I'm looking at uh, the World Class Lines teammates for a moment here. Uh, Arska and Koivnen are close together, uh, trying to pull clear of 136. And another pairing of World Class Lines cars side by side, Yari Katila and Timu Soini, now side by side going up the bridge. Just while we watch this, uh, Joe Holmes set another fastest lap on the previous lap, a 110.23, seven hundredths quicker than Mantas. So he's really, really pushing to try and close that gap as Yari uh, keeps the lead and Stiefler makes the move on Soini. Yari very, very out of shape going uh, into the uh, downhill section now. Uh, let's ride on board with Yari and actually show you how kind of tight and twisty this is. You do not want to be following another car through here, Owen. Or no, a bit rather than be side by no side. Chance. No, yeah. side by side, it'll never work out. Uh, but Matt Jester and Michael are banging wheels for just this moment. Uh, I think Matt Jester realizes he's been beaten in this occasion. Oh, so we have some going to get the and early pit pitter is it? Yeah, early pit from uh, Magic there, going straight into the pit lane, and well, having a little bit of trouble with it by the looks of it. But now we're going to see one of the drivers set their mandatory pit stop as uh, he makes his way into one of the middle, I guess, one of the middle pit boxes. And yeah, he has to stop for a minimum of ten seconds, and then makes will make his way out. As we've got battling again between the first two World Cross Lions teammates, this is Oscar on Pekakoivinen. These two have just been very tight, uh, tightly uh, packed with each other. Um, with 136 and Twin Cam uh, working hard, but of course, uh, there we go. Uh, Gabor has overtaken Twin Cam in just this last moment. So now the pressure will definitely be on these two teammates to uh, carry on their uh, their teamwork and see if, if there is a way to keep these drivers behind uh, for as long as possible. Mantas here, this is the rear view as we go on to lap 8 of 66 and he will be seeing that Joe Holmes is going absolutely nowhere and what's worse is he's driving a My3ID skin which is an absolute blast from the past and a scary view for anybody who remembers the uh, the dominance of that team in yesteryear in Live, Live for Speed uh, epic memories there as we've got uh, Michael Malik and Yari Gatilla now in a fight over start finish and it looks like Yari's gone through great move yeah, and unfortunately their momentum is a bit, uh, bit, uh, bit stuttered here with uh, Stiefler trying to duck into that closing, in-closing gap and uh, Timu around the outside 
taking the opportunity with his uh, with his enthusiasm there, and Rowney uh, behind these side by side drivers will be cautious to perhaps uh, get too close to them because uh, turn three can be a very very tricky corner. Ron just uh, oh, left his uh, braking so late there, and uh, he caught up uh, the whole, whole gap uh, that was between them. And he's very close now, uh, but here's uh, a motor fight going on. It's going for uh, his MP10, going for P9, which is uh, red wide by 136. Uh, let's see, this is a very uh, not a great place to go side by side, and Gabor decides to stay behind uh, for now. And will he launch uh, under the hair? Oh, he's uh, losing it uh, under the braking. Uh, but he's uh, very well through the corner and uh, hopefully for looking for another place. Roni yeah. takes to the pit lane, guys, uh, for his mandatory stop. Well, that's a that's a that's a barrier. Uh, there he is. <laughs> um, yeah, he's in in the pit stop. Let's see what if he can make it make his way out. Yeah. So there you go. His mandatory pit stop done and out of the way. Yeah, Mantas, seven tenths of a second. That is as close as it can be, as we've got Gabor through. But uh, no, he's not through. Actually, he's lost time. Uh, he's been in a tangle with one three six and dropped back into uh, his teammate Zesty and Twincam. Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid I was looking at Roni in the pit lane there. So. Oh, he's got damage. He's going to have to oh, go into the pit big lane. Big damage. Yeah, he's going yeah. in the pits. So up and over the uh, the flyover and into the pit lane for Gabor, and that's an unusual one to see him with damage. But you know, yeah, maybe he's been using that forces view for a reason. And yeah, look at the front left. Is it? It's completely crooked. And uh, he's missed the pit the box. Lane. Yeah, that's going to be more than the ten seconds. So he could be a lap down uh, in just a moment. It seemed like uh, Gabor was finally finding some uh, some pace. Uh, he had a quite poor qualifying result uh, for his standards. Uh, but of course, uh, the race going uh, like that on watch for him. But let's see if uh, he can salvage uh, anything from that. As they come flying under the uh, under the final corner there. Um, that that gap is is so close. It's unbelievable. Um, Thirty five second pit stop for Gabor. He's out of this one. That, there's no way he's making up that time. He's not going to be on the podium with that unless he can put some amazing pace down. Um, and he's going to get lapped by our leaders. Yeah, there he is. He's just ahead of Mantas. You can just see him out of shot there. Yeah, this is not what I had uh, uh, as a potential storyline for today. But yeah. If Gabor can uh, put the pedal to the metal then there is a slight chance he won't get blue flagged the final boss is the final car on the grid um, so Mantas is about to defeat the final boss uh, if he can get <laughs> close enough um, but yeah maybe well, I don't know maybe Gabor can find another gear uh, the LX6 already has six of them Six yeah. forward gears, anyway. I we'll have to see uh, the lap time comparisons when uh, Gabor gets a proper run of it. Uh, but now we'll move on to uh, Stiefler's progress as he's in this four way battle with Michael currently on top of the tree. And then we have the world class lines together. And, yeah, um, uh, Stiefler got past Soini unbeknownst to us at some point. So he's made up a place and we'll try and get past Michael Malik. Oh, it's just been on this lap. Uh, it was on the just at the end of the back straight on this lap, apparently. Now that he made that move, um, don't rule Jordan Lavrikov out of this race either. He's only two seconds off our race leader. Um, Jordan, a safe pair of hands, and you know any slip-ups from Mantas and Joe Holmes, Jordan Lavrikov is right there, um, consistent as ever. Yeah, without a doubt, uh, another. Uh... Delightful showing here from Lavrikov. And uh, if this uh, run of form for him carries on, then yeah, you will definitely get more wins to his name.
Well, there is Mantas leading the way with uh, Gabor just ahead of him. Um, Gabor pushing as hard as he can not to get lapped. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the case. And he's obeyed the blue flags, so yeah, he doesn't get a chance to set the one minute 10 that he needed, so he's let all our leaders through, including his teammates, so yeah. Gabor has an enormous task on his hands, even for his standards, this is absolutely uh, daunting. Yeah, not the afternoon he wanted, as we watch the race green teammates swap positions, that's Magic getting past Roni. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, Magic was ahead already, sorry. Um, so these two trying to take nine bells out of each other. Yeah, Ron has been, uh, been just a bit all over Magic uh, this whole lap, but now he's uh, messed up the exit on the last uh, corner and he's a bit too far away to make any moves on the start finish straight. Maybe he could uh, get another chance on the highway. Teammates, teammates, teammates. It's Yari on Soini and Stiefler on Michael ahead. Um, let's get some of that action. Um, Michael Malik. Oh, I have to interrupt. 136 oh. has spun in front of Zesty, but incredibly, uh, Zesty bounced off the spin and carries on as normal, but 136 is uh, back Ooh. two positions, Zesty and Zesty actually decides to pit in the distraction, and 136 uh, was just trying to perhaps uh, react to that situation. Now he's all over the shop, so Mosma carries through as well. Well, they're coming down into the, the pit lane. These guys will uh, serve their mandatory stop and <clears throat> try and oh he's missed his pit box oh is it no is it no he has he has missed his pit box <laughs> more time given away uh by zesty there unfortunately so a lot of drivers don't practice the pit stops as much as they as they need to really for uh excel um you can lose a lot of time in the pit lane so you need to really practice it beforehand and well would you look at this mantas is really under pressure now from joe holmes joe holmes is one late break away from a slipstream here, Owen. Yeah, I totally uh, see that point, Pete. So, yeah, it is a case of uh, one more good lap will uh, even them up. Oh, he nearly brushed the wall there. He did brush close. the wall there. Oh, he did, yes, yes. So that would have slowed him down a bit, not enough to cause much damage. And out of the pits comes Zesty. Yeah, he is staying well Fair within play. the blend line. So that would have given Mantas a uh, small lift uh, to to follow up with but yeah thankfully uh, all the drivers cooperated and we have our uh, battle for the lead uninterrupted yeah 136 comes into the pit lane uh, to serve his stop was umin and ahhing about uh, how to uh, when to come in at the end of the last lap um, but decides this is the opportunity that he uh, needs Jordan Lavrikov has dropped off this group a little bit now as Joe has closed up. So, well, he's still there. He's only 2.3 off. But um, Jordan will be hoping that Joe will catch up to Mantas and fight him so that we can get a three-way fight back at the front. Uh, 136 had damage, so he's repairing. That's going to be a long stop, similar to Gabor. Zesty had a 27.3 oh, second stop as well so he's more pits again oh again okay this yeah. could be a retirement this could be yeah, a retirement i don't see more. any other reason why he would come into the pit lane uh again uh no damage on that car so potentially a retirement for gabor yeah um, yeah <clears throat> yeah off he goes train to see it but there we are So that means uh, a side of car out of the race, um, leaving Zesty, the sole driver, one lap down at the moment. Um, but yeah, the top four battle here, United and Ricardo are side by side, so they're not. Uh, yeah, United made a place. Yeah, so United is up now. They're not at all uh, feeling blue. They are pushing on and wanting to try and unsettle one of the podium sitters. Joe is right behind Mantas now. Let's see if he can get a slipstream. I don't think he's quite close enough. I think you just have to have a little bit more in the in reserve at the at the apex. He's not had a good exit either. So it's tantalizingly close, but not close enough for a lead battle between Joe Holmes and Mantas. This is brilliant to see uh, Mantas with an actual battle uh, in XL. He's not had much competition this year at all. And Joe being here really does throw a spanner in his season. 
uh, without a doubt. And yeah, Mantas with that near double points advantage over the competition. Uh, the fact that yeah, he's got Joe Holmes who has uh, everything to gain really just as a pure exhibition drive for him today. Uh, that will put extra pressure onto Mantas uh, knowing he's got a lot more uh, ambition uh, in terms of the championship whereas Joe uh, will just love uh, racing for the win uh, just for the fun of it. Indeed. As they go yeah. through the chicane. No, just a reminder uh, about the standings uh, that the one who is second in the standings is Rowney and he's uh, currently P19, so he's uh, not a threat for Mantis. This race at least. So Mantis is uh, quite safe with uh, the championship standings to begin with. Yeah, but he'll want the race wins after race wins after race wins. And if Joe Holmes is here, it's just made that a little bit more difficult. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Uh, Mantas is in absolute command. Um, of the Drivers' Championship standing as it currently sits. But he wants all the wins. I think it, it would be a blow to him if he loses out here today. And I know that Joe will be uh, pretty happy if he steals it away from him. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want all the wins? <laughs> yeah, Mantis is uh, just... capable of doing it. Yeah, he just did a 109.93. So he's pulled out the fastest lap of the race. Uh, the first driver under the 1 minute 10 threshold in the race. Uh, but Joe's still only half a second behind, so the, the margins are so, so small. Um, and I know it's early doors, and I know Joe hasn't had a massive amount of practice at this track. Um, or And Mantas, I don't know how much practice he's had, but Mantas is currently holding off Joe Holmes. <laughs> it's awesome to see, as um, Michael is having a bit of a run on or was having a run. Stiefler got through Michael Malik, so yeah, that's a change of position there. Uh, Michael with a dodgy exit at the first hairpin. Stiefler making up another place to P13, so steady progress up the grid for the Born to Race driver. And Michael now slipping into the clutches of Yari Katilla, the elder Katilla. Uh, Yoni not here tonight. Interesting. Not sure yeah. if Yoni's a fan of the LX6. Yeah, I'd say he is, yeah. Um, he has certainly driven it in the past, so it's a shame he can't make it tonight. As we've got uh, the sound of a car bouncing off the wall. Oh, it's Roni, and he's ahead of Mantas. This could, oh, this could have really hurt Mantas, but Roni, oh, is he going to hold up Joe? Well, there's not really much he can do. He can't just disappear, but now he has to kind of try and let Joe through. It's an uncomfortable way to do it. Oh, and yeah, yeah, that's undone a lot of the work. Yeah, yeah, that, he's lost a bunch of time there as Joe Holmes. So I mean, um, you know, lapping is a is a thing that everyone has to deal with. Uh, Roni couldn't just disappear, and well, that means the gap is going to have gone up. That's for sure. Let's see what it goes up to over start finish. Well, only only a half a tenth, but still. Uh, Tesla so, so close. I had as well. Magic had the a moment there. Uh, was able to avoid Mantis. And let's uh, Holmes draw as well. Yeah, the LX6 is an absolutely fantastic challenge at South City, but on a track like Ch Chicane Route, the last thing you want is traffic. But ultimately, it's a short lap, it's a fast car, we've got some talented drivers at the front, and uh, we've got some, some drivers who, you know, just cannot keep pace with our lead pack, and inevitably are going to get laps at least once. The drivers at the back of this pack probably are going to see the leaders another once, if not twice, before the end of the race. We're only on lap 20. As Man Magic gets it all wrong out of the chicane, and this is Jordan Lavrikov who's struggling as a, well, suffering as a result of the two race screen drivers ahead who are almost coming together there. Oh, it's going to be a difficult race for, for these guys now as the lapping begins. I'm looking at my track map, and I believe everything uh, for another. 20 or 25 seconds is a clear road so that will uh, be a reprieve for them so uh, just as they enter uh, the the highway everyone else has gotten off it so yeah we're back to uh, full throttle racing yeah 
Yeah, good stuff. We're approaching one third through the fourth round of RTFR XL for 2024, and it's currently Mantas who leads Joe Holmes, uh, who has taken back the fastest lap um, on the previous lap, I think. And uh, well, he's absolutely smashing in the uh, the pressure on Mantas. But it's one thing to catch up around here; it's another thing to get past, and you do have to have a little bit of an advantage over your competitors to actually get the move done. It's one thing to get close, but pulling the move off is another thing. Yeah, that's the true test of any uh, skilled racing driver, to pull off overtakes um, and making them stick. Otherwise, it's just a waste of time diving uh, into a move and then not being able to take the corner. So here's an example with Unite, Kenny, uh, Laparoni and Magic without disruption um, it should be doable but yeah he needs to sit back and just let the race green drivers uh, follow the order of the blue flags so Roni out of the way but Magic has time to uh, make a gap before he has to pull over as well green purple green purple <laughs> a bit of a... I don't know the name of the green dinosaur in Barney but yeah he, there's definitely a Green Dinosaur Bernie reminds me of him. Lorenzo takes to the pit lane um, and will make his pit stop. Um, had a, an exciting start to the race, but we haven't seen much of him uh, since then. But there he is, doing his mandatory stop as uh, we switch back to Joe Holmes as they go underneath the final corner once again. And the gap only just over half a second, but still Mantas able to maintain the gap. It, it, yeah. This is an impressive performance. Mantas has been fast in previous seasons, but this season is his. Um, in a number of series, Mantas has really pulled out the stops this year. Very impressive driving so far. As he makes his way through another back marker. That's Lorenzo, who just left the pit lane. Yeah, he should be uh, hopefully getting straight down to some push laps now after his pit stop. Uh, another bother on him with a refuel, 16.2 seconds. There we go, Joe can get, get past him as well uh, before the bus stop she came. Yeah, Jordan Labrakov's still there now, four seconds the gap. Um, but, you know, he's being consistent, he's putting in the laps. He might have got a little bit unlucky with traffic somewhere. Um, but, you know, everybody's going to have to deal with that at some point. The leaders have already lapped uh, everyone up to P15. So we're just team Soini, the next car. As Mantas sets another fastest lap of the race. A 109.89. He's um, finding each and every tenth of a second this stage. There's nothing to really separate these two drivers on their ultimate pace as the yeah. fuel starts to burn. Two tenths of a second faster than Joe that lap, so the gap almost up to a second. Mantas is really, really finding the pace. Interesting to think about when they're going to make their pit stop, though. We know that Mantas threw a bit of curveball last time out. He pitted halfway. Um, in fact, maybe he's just slightly after halfway. We didn't expect it from the race leader. We expected him to uh, go into the pits a little bit later, but, you know, fuel strategy comes into it. This is a light car with uh, relatively relatively big fuel tank, though they will be um, pushing the limits towards the end of the race. If, if drivers go over, I think it's one and a half percent a lap, then they will need to do a splash and dash before the end, or they'll need to fuel save. Uh, th this race will be fuel and potentially tyre limited, depending on how much they're locking up into corners. Yeah, 1.51% uh, to get the extra decimal point in, but yeah, absolutely true, Pete. If they are not managing their fuel economy, then yeah, they will definitely have to refuel uh, but there we go, Joe responds oh. to the fastest lap with a 109.87. So, yeah, just everything that is available to these drivers, they're just extracting it, and yeah, it is exceptional. Yeah, this is this is the top of the top here. Um, these two pushing each other to go even faster and even faster again, and this is not going to stop. Going to keep going and keep going as the fuel burns off. I I think. I think Mantas, before we went live, was practicing the pit stops to try and 
uh, manage his pit stop by the fuel load. Um, and I think he mentioned that he was putting something like 43% in the car. So we should expect him to stop just after the halfway stage. So around about lap 40, I'd expect him to be in. Uh, maybe slightly earlier, lap 38, 39. Because um, he's not, if he's if he's timing his fuel uh, his fuel stop to be as close to 10 seconds as possible, then he's not going to be going as far into the race maybe as Joe, potentially. Maybe Joe will eyeball it. So let's see who's got more fuel on board, who's going to pit first, because um, that will really sort these two out. We'll see where they are uh, after the stop. But I predict that Mantas only has about 10 to 15 laps left of fuel. Yeah, it makes sense just to try and stay competitive and, and have a moderate fuel load. Um, and of course, the tires still, still be in uh, good shape. The fastest lap uh, shrinks to 109.79. Yeah, these uh, 70 second laps or thereabouts uh, are just absolutely unreal. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, they really are doing everything to get those lap times down as uh, Unite now catches up to Lorenzo. Um, trying to get past the back marker there, Ricardo in P5, currently dropping a little bit back from his teammate. And there's a big, big gap from P5 to P6. Pekka Goyman and only just coming up to the chicane, uh, closely followed by uh, Thimili, who's doing a grand job in P7. And we'll be looking to try and catch up to the back of Koivinen as quickly as he can. With Emily live on Twitch, if you want to go to his channel, Gabor was live but is no longer in the race, so Thamuli, the only other driver on the server who is uh, live on the uh, on his channel on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Thamuli underscore. You can see on the on, uh, on board picture how close the walls actually are when you go this speed. It so, like, seems like he's almost touching the walls. It looks very crazy from here. He's using a wide field of view as well. It's kind of interesting to see the onboard views. We don't get to see them very often um, in in these races. So it's, it's, it's cool to see the different driving styles. Like you can see that Gabor was using the forces view and turning it on and off. And uh, Thamuli's running, he might be running an ultra wide monitor. It's a weird yeah, aspect he, ratio. He has a very wide monitor, so the, that's why he has this resolution. Well, there we go, it's a cool insight. Owen. Uh, Lorenzo had just been lapped by the uh, fourth and fifth placed Sidus drivers. Uh, may have given Ricardo a little uh, uh, opening to catch his teammate, but down the start finish straight, it's still uh, firmly in United's control. Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, that uh, lapping cost him ha more than half a second, but Rick uh, hasn't got any means to overtake. But here we go, looking from uh, Behind Michael and now in front of Yari, this position uh, battle for 12th. It's definitely oh so close to the wall there for <laughs> yes. both of the drivers. So nearly a case of uh, following the opponent into the wall. But here we go. This should be Yari's opportunity to get slipstream across the uh, Stafford Strait, including the railway line. Um, unfortunately, Zest is just uh, disconnected from service. He must have retired a while ago. Ooh. No, he's just left. Oh, he's just gone there. Yeah. yeah, he's just gone there. So that's another DNF for Sidus. Um, we're drawing from a doomed race, unfortunately. Mm. Um, yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, Zesty and Gabor are coming to South City as we watch Yari go a bit deep out of the first hairpin, and that will give Michael some respite for another lap. But yeah, the gap at the front now up to 1.1 seconds. I am so intrigued to know when Mantas and Joe come into the pit lane. I'm fairly certain I know when Mantas is coming in, but when is Joe going to come in? How much fuel did he have in at the beginning of the race? Oh, Michael hard into the wall there. That's a scary moment. Mm. The Dallas got the leg to get very close. Well, but unfortunately, this is not the place to go start by side. <laughs> so he no, has yeah. to wait. Nine they go, and then turn ten will complete the lap. Uh, it's again very close for Yari, but you, know, you really do need to be on the on the back end here to have any joy with an overtake. Uh, he's going to gain maybe one or two extra miles per hour. 
but it's not enough if my cop stays uh, between the lines including the uh, the bus lane he should be fine here we go though Yari peaks but no uh, no joy as the race leaders continue to set one minute nines yeah, they're in a different class at the moment. Jordan Avrikov is, is still there or thereabouts. Um, but yeah, as they head down the hill once again, it seems fairly even between Yari and Michael. We've got Spider-Man in the pits. Uh, these two are the closest on track, so we might as well stick with them and see what they're, uh, how this battle evolves for now. Yari looks like he's got the pace. Michael is a little bit twitchy here and there, but Yari needs to tighten his lines as well and make sure he doesn't overshoot the final, or sorry, the first hairpin again. And he might have a run up the back straight, potentially. Yeah, it looks the exact same scenario as before, to be honest. And let's see if Michael uh, maybe gives up even more speed, but yeah, he's, he's even hugging the inside retaining wall just to make it difficult to be followed. Yeah, let's see how Yari does this now. Um, this is where he lost time before. Back to line on the way in this time. Yeah, that's much better. So there we go. Not quite close enough for a slipstream or maybe a distant toe. Yeah, Michael thinks he's got a chance. He's going defensive already. Yari's not moved over as quickly as he maybe should have done. Um, so yeah, Yari gaining quite a bit towards the end of the straight but not close enough to make the move. Oh, lots of sliding. As uh, that was close. And lap traffic for these drivers is it's the uh, the new uh, back marker in Spider-Man uh, has to pull over in his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles car. Uh, and then Batarook in the light blue. There you are, there's the nice uh, scheme. And he may be pulling into... Oh, he's pulling in for more lapped cars, of course. There we go. Letting everyone through. Uh, Badaruk in the light blue will be caught soon enough by our battlers for P12. And then, of course, our race leaders will envelop them all very soon. Yeah, and Mantas has opened the gap to one and a half seconds. So either he's just found some pace... Or Joe Holmes has uh, lost a little bit of time. As we've got Twincam catching up to Asuka as well. We've got more battles developing here as Asuka goes wide at the final corner. Laying plenty of rubber on the road and that's going to give Twincam a, a, a go surely um, down into the next lap. Here we go, Twincam to the, to the left-hand side. He's through. Arska has to yield, maybe waiting for Twincam to wiggle around on his high speed, but here we go. It is the job done for Twincam, P8 for him. Yeah, great move uh, by Twincam to move up a place to P8. Uh, eight, as we've got Yari Cotilla and Michael Malik. Don't want to miss this. We watched them for long enough. Yari, really, really close. He had an overlap going in, but you, uh, like uh, Mika said earlier, you don't want to be side by side going through there. Um, and uh, Yari has to back off again, wide out of the first corner, um, losing a ton of time. Yari needs to get that tightened up. Yeah, he really can't afford to hang about here. Uh, oh, sorry. See, see yeah, I, um, absolutely smashed the the uh, exit wall coming out of the final corner. Uh, I thought he lost more time than he did, but Sony would have seen it, and we'll know that uh, Stiefel will have some rear left damage now. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, no, no bother. Uh, I suppose yeah, uh, Yari. Uh, he can't afford oh. to lose too much time. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt again. <laughs> Stiefel hard into the wall. <laughs> sorry, I'm going to shut uh, up. Leave yeah. these guys on camera and let you finish your point. You'll see it for yeah, yourself. Uh, my point is basically, yeah, uh, Yari can't afford to lose all this time. He may, he's now withdrawn from the battle and takes the pit. So, uh, yeah, Mott McCarry, he was well clear of Michael anyway, so I suppose it doesn't uh, disrupt Yari's plans too much. Yeah, Timmy saw any into uh, pit lane as well. And who's that in the pit lane? It's Yari Katilla as well as you mentioned yeah. so those two 
in at the same time using a similar strategy. And we're nearly yeah. 50%, yeah, so uh, yeah. these drivers are on the bubble. I think, well, we're over 50% now for these two, so Mantas is going to be in in the next five laps. So he's not refueling, so he's doing it mm. by eye. Yari did a fuel time stop, so Yari is safe. Toiny, uh, Soiny, Toiny, Toiny <laughs> is <laughs> is doing it by eye. So he thinks he's got enough fuel. As Antas weaves his way past, who is that? Uh, couldn't quite tell. Getting out of the way though. It's Michael. Yeah, it was Michael. Sorry, couldn't quite spot delivery. Joe's managed to get through as well. Um, Mantas does uh, goes around for another lap. Yeah, I expect another couple of laps, and then he'll be in. Yeah, you want to spot the right gap in the traffic, of course. If undercutting is uh, a possibility, there is a lot of uh, lap traffic in sector three at the minute. So, yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't pit until I'm absolutely certain I can be uh, in a bit of empty track and I can begin to push whoever that uh, pitter may be. Another, another fastest lap for Mantas. He's, uh, he's. Bringing those times down and down and down. A 1097, what was it? 76 this time uh, for Mantas. So absolutely smashing it today. Showing everyone what he's got. But how much fuel does Joe Holmes have in that tank of his? Does he have more fuel than Mantas? That's the million dollar question right now. The question we are all wondering. Um, as we believe, Mantas is going to time his stop on the fuel, which means it'll be a couple of laps before he's in. And we will see. Unless he was throwing a dummy and tricking us all into thinking that was what he was going to do. Um, I can't imagine that starting the race with 100% fuel in this car would, would be a fun thing to do. So I assume that Joe might be on a similar strategy. You may as well refuel your car at the pit stop. It is a strategic benefit. While you're stationary, you might as well fill the car. And you might as well not start the race with a full tank. Hecker in the pit Yes. And we'll see a world class Lions car just pop in. There we go. And he will uh, make sure to find an early box just to make certain of his, uh, his, his 10 seconds. Uh, Deef yeah. is repairing damage, so he's yeah, right going to be on. there a while and refueling. So Pekka Koivinen is going to leave his box and get past. Um, Pekka left the box in second gear as Joe Holmes goes in the pits before Mantas. Mm -hmm. So Joe Holmes is timing his pit stop um, with, with fuel and comes in earlier than Mantas. So Mantas really did do well uh, to stretch the fuel and maintain the lead with more, well, potentially more fuel in the tank, so fair play. As Joe picks his pit box, um, nails it perfectly, and let's see how long his pit stop is. Fuel only going in, and how long was that? 10.5 seconds, nice. so a little bit more fuel maybe than he would have needed. The Mantas should have a shorter stop than that, and might gain Lorenzo. anything Lorenzo. up to one second. Yeah, Lorenzo, who is of course uh, in 13th, he uh, got past, uh, so I suppose the logical thing for Joe to do was to find a gap, and if uh, Lorenzo uh, can be caught and passed, yeah, he's got a huge gap in front of him, so that's a huge benefit. Yeah, let's see, will Mantas go in this lap or the next lap? What's he going to do? Is he going to try and stretch it one more lap? No, he's in. So one lap only, the, the advantage for uh, Mantas into the pit lane. Let's see how long his stop is. pushing as hard as he possibly can without uh, threatening to break the speed limit without the aid of a pit limiter on board the LX6. So here we go, this is the crucial lap now. Can Joe pull something special out? Jordan Lavrikov is in as well, so too is, uh, well, Mantas has now finished his stop, making his way down uh, pit lane. And let's see where he comes out in relation to Joe. Joe just going underneath the bridge. He's got Lorenzo, as you said, just ahead of him. Uh, Mantas is probably going to come out right alongside Lorenzo, you'd expect. Here he comes. Where is Joe? Uh, well, Joe's only close. just going to have a start finish. 
Um, so actually, he's, he's got the advantage and some. So Mantas's stop was uh, 10.3 seconds, so he gained two tenths alone just from the stop time. And there is the gap. He's managed to get past Lorenzo with the blue flags. Um, and the gap now, well, what is it? Uh, three seconds just under? Two and a half seconds? Four, so, I suppose, round and down. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll, get a, we'll get an accurate time at the timing line, but the long and the short of it is that Mantas has, made, has taken an advantage, a big one, um, by pitting one lap later. That's two, yeah, you're right. Wowee. Fair play. Pinkham's stop was a 10.14. It's quite a fast one. One of the fastest we've seen. Um, Michael Malik with a 10.09. There's some quick stops going on. As Rick Cardle now takes over the lead of the race, but that is artificial because he's yet to stop. So to... Uh, has Unite. These guys potentially not timing their pit stops on the fuel line. No, that is interesting. Um, they are able to uh, get the fuel on board, but they still have to wait for the 10 seconds uh, to elapse. So yeah, the fuel isn't their uh, guiding light necessarily. Um, so we'll see. See if they come in this lap. No, they both they both stay out, so they're pushing it onto lap forty. Um, so yeah, I don't think they'll be timing their stop entirely on the fuel, which is uh, a risk for you, Knight, because he loves to mess up a pit stop. Owen. Yeah, historically speaking, yeah, it's happened to him uh, countless times, uh, and it is Ooh. something that he will want to uh, never be me never hear mentioned again, just to make sure. He's got that skill locked down. Unite just set the fastest lap. Mm, out of there nowhere. You are. Yeah, out of nowhere. Unite goes in with a 109.72. So, my oh my, what's going on there? Low fuel, assumedly. So, might not be timing the stop, but certainly going to need a refuel. Let's see what's happening. But I will reiterate, Unite does love to mess up a pit stop. Um, makes more errors than you would expect from a driver of his uh, experience. Rick's gone in, and Unite has not. Um, yeah, Rick Hardle in. Spider-Man takes a pit box as well. And there goes Rick, just in behind him. He's got half of his car outside the box as an intention to get going immediately. So Spider-Man, under 10 seconds, oh. I'm afraid. But it is a second pit stop, so he has pitted twice, so that's okay. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so if he's been in twice, that's fine. Rick Cardle's fuel... Uh, oh, actually, that's nice of Spider-Man. He let um, yeah, Rick good. Cardle through. 10.3 seconds for Rick Cardle. So, uh, decent stop there. And he is back out. Now, uh, Thamuli's come in to the pits from P6. Just for fuel. See what he can do. He makes I have to like say, uh, Jordan Laverkoff is behind Rick Cardle. Yeah, Rick Cardle just mad. turned before Jordan Laverkoff, and now they're fighting there yeah. <laughs> on the back straight. How did that happen? Um, not something I expected to hear, but yeah, we go. Yeah, they are. They were side by side uh, for a, a brief moment. And Rick Cardle, how has he managed that? <laughs> well, didn't that, expect that to see that. That's me as well. Well, yeah, Jordan pitted a while ago, so yeah, yeah either it was a slow yeah. stop or something, um, maybe traffic related, but Rick Cardle must have just done the pit stop better, I guess, and, and kept the pace up with the lower fuel. Uh, remember that Jordan would be running around with pretty much 40% fuel on board, Rick Cardle had next to nothing, and that's a pace advantage in such a light car, uh, so but by just stopping that little bit later, Rick Cardle able to, to get past. Um, as we switch to Thamuli, who is right behind uh, Pekka Koivinen. Sorry, Pekka Koivinen just got through, sorry, on Thamuli. And that's Twincam just behind. Yeah, 
Since we can, will not want to experience a net loss in position, so uh, this is really important for him to uh, pull his way back through. But I suppose uh, Mad Jester, he might be on a long stint if I'm correct, so he should get one position back at least. Uh, Unite stays out again, so mm. uh, this is an advantage then for Unite, uh, definitely over Jordan Lavrikov. Uh, but how close can he get to Joe Holmes? I don't think it's possible to gain that much time. There's seven seconds of a gap between Rick Cardle and Joe. I think Jordan Lavrikov's had an error somewhere, or, or a problem in, in pit lane maybe, because the gap wasn't seven seconds before. So there's been an issue or something that's meant that Jordan has lost more time uh, maybe than, um, than we realised. Chris is going to go and check the replays. We'll see what happened there, because I, I don't see how he's lost an extra three seconds out of seemingly thin air. I'm sure there is a, a some sort of uh, logical explanation, but we'll have to figure that out with the uh, replay to aid us. Um, yeah, if Unite thinks this overcut strategy can pay off, then yeah, he will be a contender for the third position. Uh, he'll be ideally uh, within reach of his teammate. It was about four seconds between them when I looked at the time and screen, uh, mistaking their uh, their interval compared to Mantas and Joe. Uh, so yeah, it, it will be interesting to see if Unite can prove uh, he's got a trick up his sleeve. Yeah, well, he goes on to lap 44 without a pit stop and will be stretched. Well, he stretched the gap to 10.6 seconds over Mantas. Um, well, actually, it's gone down to 10.3. So Mantas's pays, even with more fuel than Unite, is still superior. Unbelievable uh, from Mantas there. And yeah, 2.4 seconds, the gap from Mantas to Joe Holmes now. Two and a half seconds, pretty much. Uh, superb, absolutely superb pace from Mantas at this point in the race. Full credit. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, absolutely stupendous driving here from Unite. Uh, yeah, Mantas is trying to get the uh, intel out of his opponent. And Badrock has had a hit of the wall at turn three. That may have uh, put Mantas off a bit more. So he may just be thinking a bit too far ahead, maybe. Uh, the race is far from over. So yeah, he's trying to play tricks. Uh, Unite responds, yes. The very Finnish answer there. Yeah, entirely unhelpful from Unite, but he goes on to lap 45. Um, I don't know why Mantas cares. He's still gaining on him, uh, but I guess it's just fun amongst friends. So, yeah, Mantas finding time uh, on the back straight to send a message to Unite to ask him how much fuel he started with. Anyway, you'll find out soon, Mantas. It's, you're going to find out within the next few laps. Um, pretty sure. As Unite now catches up to, I think that's Stiefler. Um, yep, Stiefler moves out of the way. That's him through. No problem there. But yeah, Unite having fun out in front as the gap to Mantas drops to 10.07 seconds. So yeah, um, Mantas, even with that higher fuel load, absolutely on fire as Unite clips the wall. Yeah, that, that should be the last of that. Nope, he stays out. Uh, so it goes round. Tamuli versus uh, Twin Cam here, guys. Uh, let's take a look into turn one. Uh, Tamuli oh, had the inside. Joe's gone. Oh no, he's what out of the race. Oh. He hit the wall. He hit the wall. We missed Goodness. it. No. Joe's, Joe's crashed into a wall. Sorry, I, I've completely ruined this battle that you were commentating on. Uh, we've lost Joe, so ah, all that intrigue. Um, Unfortunately, goes uh, and Joe's commented saying he thinks the right front was going to pop anyway. So yeah, the tyres are uh, limited for these guys. Um, sorry, Owen, carry on. No, absolutely not. Uh, no problem because I wouldn't have noticed any problems with his tyres. To be honest, yeah, it could have been a camber-related issue. Uh, Chris says in my ear. Um, yeah, Mantas says he's got plenty of meat left on his. So we'll we'll see uh, what's going on. Maybe just a camera, cam, uh, uh, camber issue on the front right of Joe Holmes's car. As the movie, does he have the slipstream? No. Twin Cam has the advantage up to eighth place. And 
And uh, yeah, Unite continues to lap and goes past the pit entrance again. He's going to make it 20 laps to go over the start finish line this time around. Um, and is probably the last car, or one of the last cars on the track yet to oh, make a no. stop. Oh, Mad Jester under, uh, underestimates <laughs> his time. So it's an 8.3, oh. meaning he is uh, doomed to uh, fail to hit the required time unless he pits again. So, yeah, he did go very long himself, and now he's, he's lost all that progress. That's a shame. Uh, yeah, that's a shame, because he's come out in P10, which is a very respectable place. And look at the amount of space behind him. He had no no reason to risk uh, the pit time. So an unforced error for Mad Jester means he's probably going to get a time penalty um, at the end of the race, unless he chooses to come in again. Um, he'll have to weigh up the pros and cons of that. There are f uh, three drivers yet to stop. Unite. Uh, Oscar and Michael Malik, um, who needs to come in for their one and only mandatory pit stop. And yeah, well, Mantas has driven a perfect race so far and has just lost his main rival in the race to uh, a coll collision with the wall. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure which wall it was. I'm guessing it was in the chicane. Um, we missed it on the cameras, unfortunately. He hit the second left apex and that was the end. Um, so, unlucky there for Joe. Happens to the best of us. As Unite continues to... Well, he's holding on to the fastest lap, but he's losing time. Hand over fist to Mantas at the moment. Yeah, that is uh, just a sign, perhaps, that uh, the strategy uh, has run its course. And maybe he's just hoping that he can uh, rise up with... Uh, the ability to push at the end um, yeah. yeah he's definitely going to be behind Jordan in the battle for the podium so, well with yeah. um, Joe Holmes out of the equation it's a guaranteed podium for Unite if he, unless he uh, makes well, a mistake well fourth place is on the line here yeah yeah I mean Jordan uh, Jordan Lavrikov and Rick Cardle still very close together um, there's yeah. there's Rick Cardle Jordan Lavrikov just making his way through a back marker uh, that's Michael oh no who is that that is one of the ZFR old cars um, but yeah these two pretty close together this isn't over these two have been glued together almost since the um, since they came out of the pit lane. So Ricardo managed to get the move done on the end of exit pit lane, but their pace has been fairly similar since then. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if uh, where Unite comes out in relation to this. Twenty three and twenty three and change the gap. Actually, has Ricardo gained? Yeah, I think he has. I think he's gained on Unite a little bit there. Uh, so Ricardo on pace as well. The fact that United has the fastest lap might be a bit deceptive at this point. So we'll just have to wait and see. He's leaving it very long. Uh, he's taking it very long into the race before pitting. That is correct, yeah. Uh, he's hovering around the nine seconds uh, lead now. So we'll see how he gets on past the sector one line. And uh, will it stay at nine seconds? Uh, yes, it will. It's about the same as it was. So Mantas is just maintaining control here, uh, but Unite, he may be thinking, uh, when, am I, when am I due to pit? It can't be long now. Nineteen cars on circuit at the minute, so yeah, the field has certainly reduced in size. But we do have a battle now. The race green teammates together, and Lorenzo uh, will make uh, a chance here for himself. They go side by side under the ridge. Oh, Ronnie was too loose there. He lost the back end, so he lets Lorenzo through. And then Stiefler decides to call it quits. There, he's out. You don't see that very often, do you? Having cars going side by side through the first corner. Um, oh, I've seen that. So yeah, good stuff. Um, but yeah, we're only trying to get back under the slipstream. He does so, moves to the inside for the next corner. And teammates going at it for P12 currently. Uh, stones throw away from Mott and McCarry. Six seconds up the road from these two. Oh, Jonas finally uh, pitting it. Let's see his stop, how he manages. 
yeah, don't mess it up now. Um, that would be kind of comical. Just made it down to the pit lane speed limit and now needs to time. He needs to count to 10. How Doesn't hard can that be? Over 10 seconds. It has to be over 10 oh, seconds. Oh, what 10 the one. heck? Yeah, that was so close. <laughs> 10.10 seconds from Unite. That looked too quick. And just by watching the camera, I knew that was quick. But yeah, that was uh, just over. Just over. But that's all you need to be, just over. Um, fair play. One of the fastest stops we've seen today. I think Michael did better, just. Um, but he rejoins in P4. You were right, Owen. He's uh, he's not been able to keep pace with Labrakov and, and Ricard Law or gain on them. No, he hasn't gained, but he has the chance with uh, the remaining uh, quarter of the race to just go full pelt and try and catch them up. So yeah, he has the confidence. And after taking on the uh, extra fuel on board, yeah, he has a he has a slim chance, but it's certainly possible that he can get a podium out of this. Yeah, he's clearly got the pace. He's got the fastest lap, and he set the fastest lap at a point when he still must have had um, a decent chunk of fuel left. So certainly got pace under his. Um, under the wheels. Also, Lavrikov is uh, less than a second away from Rick Carl, so they might be fighting a little bit, uh, which could help you not even catch them. Yeah, um, who was that going into the pit lane? Was it Spider Man going into the pits again? It was. Um, he's gone into the pits to. Um, for some reason, maybe to top up the time or. Very. Oh, he's slow. okay for time. Very slow in the pit lane, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyway. Um, yeah, Mantas with a 13.7 second lead over Rick Cardell. Um, dominant performance pushed to the limit by Joe, Joe Holmes, don't forget. But Joe just went over the limit and hit the wall. And that was the end of his race, sadly. Um, but Mantas showing absolutely no signs of slowing down. Keeps pushing, pushing, pushing. I, I, I bet he wants the fastest lap. I, I, I reckon that's he will want that. He'll want the triple crown. He'll want the fastest lap, the win, and... Well, he already has pole in qualifying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the hat trick is at stake. He's got two out of the three uh, trifectas, I suppose. Um, so he just needs the fastest lap to uh, seal that deal. Um, he will not reach one minute nine point seven just yet. So he's on he's on the right path. But we're checking out Mad Jester now in his defence against Michael. So yes, yeah, sorry, he's got three. I beg your pardon. Yeah, he just slipped through uh, under the under the bridge at the final corner, and Michael hit the wall, and that was as simple as that. So, Michael has been psyched out of the way by Manchester, who is he? To be fair, he's running with that penalty, um, didn't do enough time in his pit stop, and will therefore need to do uh, well, need to take a penalty or go through the pit lane again. Which at this point, probably better just to take the penalty. Oh, he's gone into the wall. He's lost concentration oh. here, Manchester. The, the entry to turn three, he wanted to cut the apex as fine as possible, but he, he didn't turn uh, at the right time. So he hit the wall. I mean, Michael could get him straight back. Uh, damage, a uh, little bit of damage, but that must have been from before because it was just really a rub off the wall rather than a smack. Use very visible language, Owen. <laughs> well, uh, it's the most appropriate word I could say at the time, and it made sense to me. Me too. It's, it's lovely. Michael Malik will hope to get that place back. Um, won't like the the thought of uh, losing the place so late in the race. So good it rhymes. As we go through uh, the first corner, the first hairpin. Very, very difficult hairpin, this. Especially the exit. You've got that weird kind of lay-by thing with an Armco barrier that always comes out to meet you uh, much too quickly. And especially with this car, it's you always want to be a bit greedy on the exit. And if you clip it with the way the with the hugely flared wheel arches in this Caterham-inspired kit car LX6 in the for speed, um, it's so easy just to clip the rear, do yourself some damage, and sometimes spin out. Um, but yeah, it looks like Manchester has well and truly got the measure on uh, Michael Malik there. Good effort. Yeah, he's pulling clear now, but yeah, we have Rick Cardle in the purple. He'll be gaining on them very soon for the blue flag. Right. And there we go. Fastest lap. He's got it straight back. Oh. 109.61 as chat on Twitch 
They're commenting. That's insane. Uh, he's too accurate, so yeah, you're absolutely right. Oh, no, he hits the wall. Oh, <laughs> just as you said it. Oh, Lord. Get I, out I, of the I commentary box him. for two seconds. Yeah, you cursed him there. That was, well, to be honest, I, what did I literally say on the lap before? I forget. <laughs> you forgot. I was, I was talking about that wall. <laughs> that exact oh, yeah, wall yeah. there with the arm code that comes. Well, yeah, into the wall goes the quote too accurate mantas and well he's human folks yeah, yeah. maybe he's just a little excited now uh, still another uh dozen laps to go so yeah just needs to calm it down now he has that huge lead so it's all right just needs to calm it down Roni and Lorenzo going at it again, side by side, underneath the brick bridge. Uh, they go in, in synchrony. Well, synchrony. Oh, Yanai hits the wall at oh. the bus stop. So oh, he's actually he spun. Yeah. Uh, he's spun it after a hit. So Arska, of Ooh. course, he has to pit, I believe, so he won't benefit as much as you'd imagine. But yeah, he'll give Yanai a little bit of uh, thinking um, before he has to pit. Well, any chance of United catching up to Jordan Lavrikov are marred. Um, it's not inevitable. United has good days, but it seems to be that small errors seem to be plaguing his results recently. Um, a re seriously, seriously quick driver, but a couple too many errors creeping into his racing. And that's unlucky, though. The, the walls at the end of that chicane do come at you very, very quick. Um, we saw Joe Holmes lose it and completely remove himself from the race in which he came today. Uh, but Unite deciding to continue. Um, doesn't think he's got enough damage to warrant a retirement. Uh, but Mantas is going to come around to make it 10 laps to go in round four of RT4XL for 2024. Thanks for joining us and thanks for watching this back on the, the video on demand if that's your way of watching these as he goes over start finish. And. What a dominant performance so far. 14.1 seconds over anybody else. Uh, we lost Joe Holmes a couple of laps to go. Well, a few laps to go now. Um, but no other competition currently for Mantas to play with. Oh, Timu has destroyed his front right shock absorber. That's why he wasn't able to take turn one properly. He'll have to pit that car immediately, to be honest. He's not going to be able to handle this corner either. No, he's sliding all over the shop. He does catch it though, fair play. Next one's going to be difficult, let's see if... <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> guessing that car's going to be coming into the pit lane, yeah. Bounce, 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 bounce. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just about. It's but, a yeah. very very hard to drive the car when it's taken some damage. That car will be going want to handle. straight into the pit lane. There we go. Up the hill he drives. Very weird pit entry this, for those who haven't seen it. You go up a little flyover, and then straight down again. And then into the pit lane. Yeah, there's even this little left-right kink. It's a small chicane there. And then you break down. It's like, it's very tricky. So you really want to uh, try it out beforehand, <laughs> before going into the race. Yeah, it's very difficult. Uh, the pit lane at uh, South City, easily one of the most difficult. Maybe Kyoto uh, is the only exception or only other track that's slightly tricky um, the race green teammates providing us with plenty of uh, entertainment this evening in their home race essentially and it's Roni leading Lorenzo for P12 Dimo Sony is going to have a lengthy pit stop he'll lose out uh, a couple of places maybe uh, 31 seconds the pit stop for Team Sony and he got a drive through penalty uh... to add on to it so that's a smack, Owen. Yeah, that's a huge hit to take. Um, but of course, the Badaruk is two laps uh, further back than him. So, uh, yeah, Timu just needs to make a few more laps to be classified, and he should be uh, settled in a, a comfortable 16th position. But yeah, he, he'd be he'd definitely raging with himself that he's, he's inconvenienced, inconvenienced himself even more. These two have been together for a long time. They're really trying to catch up and pass Pekka Koivinen. Uh, they've been like this pretty much since the pit stop phase, I think. Uh, barely any gap at all between them. Less than half a second as we watch Thamuli's on board, uh, which has been provided to us by him. Um, a perk for Simbroadcast's Twitch subscribers, this. Um, if you want to 
get you're on board on on our broadcasts you can drop us a subscription and join our subscribers only discord server that we have um open to anyone who has ever subscribed to uh us on twitch so thanks for his support and all of the supporters that we have on our channel really appreciate it and it's nice to see the onboards um doing regular series Yeah, indeed. Uh, Meek uh, renewed his subscription to the Twitch channel today, so that is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Not heard from Meek in a while. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, first of all. And yeah, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm just focusing on, on this intense racing here. Oh, well, not not that intense at the moment, but we almost have a fight here. <laughs> yeah. Ranzo's caught back up to Roni. And uh, well, we'll see if he's close enough as we go through the um, through under the bridge once again. Uh, not really. Almost within touching distance. And Mantas has stretched his gap now to 15 and a half seconds, and will be uh, have it have six laps to go at the end of this one. Superb. He's going to lap all the way up to Twin Cam now, and uh, he's he's been holding on to that eighth place with a firm grasp. So, yeah, the fact that Twin Cam has just had an ordinary race, he's done a, a sterling job battling when he needed to and to complete uh, these these good laps. So even then, he's been caught up before the end of the race. So yeah, that goes to show you. Yeah, it's the most humiliating thing, honestly. It's the worst when you get caught right at the end of the race and lapped. It's the thing that every driver tries to avoid. But sometimes when you've got drivers like Mantas on their day, uh, you just cannot avoid it. And it doesn't matter how dig you, uh, how how dig you deep, how deep you dig, um, you cannot, you just can't get away. They're just too too quick. Uh, speaking of too quick, unfortunately today I think um, Rick Cardler's got the better of Jordan Lavrikov. Still a solid P3, first step on the podium currently, uh, but the gap two seconds to Rick Cardle now. Um, he's just slowly but surely making his way up the road and leaving him in the dust. And he's gone deep at the first corner and has let Lorenzo through. So, yeah. That's also Oscar finally making his pit stop, which I believe is uh, the last one who hasn't uh, met the mental rest stop yet. And he's off with turn in point nine. Yep, safe. Um, a little bit more than he needed, three seconds more than he needed, but maybe he did uh he did he changed his tires. So he thinks mm. that tires are gonna be limited. In fact, yeah, his front right was bad that I'm hearing. So yeah, some other drivers may struggle with um with tires. Let's uh Let's get our eagle eyes out and see who's um, who's tire limited um, at the front. I don't think anybody else at the front is necessarily uh, going to suffer with any punctures. Only the drivers with aggressive cambers. I don't think we've got anybody else uh, in the front of the field. In fact, in the entire field with with tire issues. Mantas's front right is hot, but not. He should have plenty left unless he's been locking up. So we'll see. It, it kind of seems like uh, world class lines and race screen drivers have like very aggressive camber on uh, right front and they're getting white team but uh, they should be fine until the end of the race yeah agreed um it's not often guys that we say we we have multiple strategy you know things that are maybe slightly problematic in rtfr um did you say pekka puncture yes i did front right Oh, okay, oh, so that, that didn't gone. look. Yeah, that didn't look thin, but that's been that's a lockup puncture. So drivers are definitely at risk here of further punctures. Just because Pekka know he's got a puncture, who he's going to, isn't he? When he gets into the chicane, we'll find out now. He's going to find out now. Who's that? Yeah, oh, yeah there you go. Oh, into the wall. And into the wall. And that's oh, going to be damage as well. Yeah, he didn't. He must not have realised, guys. There's no way. Why yeah, would he have gone in there at the such no, pace? It's on the straight. Yeah. He was going round a right-hander and he wouldn't have known until he went into the left. So that's hard into the wall. 
he's going to have damage, and that's P6. He's going to he's lost from sorry P5 that he's lost to um to Thamuli. So yeah, that's surely that's going to be alarm bells for this guy Mantas, um who by from our view here looks to have a similar conditioned front right tire to Pekka Koivinen. It just depends how much he's locked up. I was, I'll just... finish my point from before. Yes, I, I don't please. think we've had um, many races in RTFR XL in recent history where both fuel and tyre strategy has come into it. No, great, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it has combo. been very rare that we get both at the same time. It's usually one or the other, particularly the tyres could be at risk. But we have both on the line here with three laps remaining for the race leader, Mantas who has uh, made his lead even larger than when I was uh, observing him uh, recent, about probably oh, 10 laps to go oh, in the wild Manchester. Manchester. He yeah, he's, he must have level. seen Pekka and coming out of the pits and thought, I can have him, and then lost <laughs> completely lost the car on the bumps. But yeah, yeah Manchester could have P8 here because Pekka and fresh tyres, just out but, of the pit lane. Uh, remember, um, Manchester had, uh, he didn't stop for long enough, so he's going to have a penalty. And also, uh, Manchester is one of the guys whose front right looks very similar to what uh, Goyman ah, had just a moment enough. ago. So he has to stay careful and not look up, so... Also, I was gonna uh, say... Magic seems to be another driver with a very thin front tire. Oh, oh no! That's... Ah! Uh, <laughs> it's all going wrong! Uh, Michael throw. he's got yeah. the position. He's got the position back. I was just about to say that uh, Mika sucks the fun out of everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> The fun came back to us, and well, yeah, Majesta does have that penalty. You are right, fair enough. Um, but yeah, we are down to two laps to go, including this one. Mantas will be conscious of that front right, but let's be fair: if the front right tire goes bang, he has a 16-second lead. He can do a lap with a with a with no front right tire um, and not lose that much time. So he'll be fine unless he crashes. It seems quite hot and a bit thin, but unless he does some very big log up, he should be all, all good. But I just said this before, and then Kogon didn't just blow up his tire, so I yeah. want to say it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, it doesn't look thin enough to be at risk, but Alifest does simulate flat spots, and you never know. You do never know. Um, from our from our seat, anyway, you can't know. But onto the final lap goes Mantas. He's holding the purple flag next to his name. That means he has the fastest lap. And he got pole position, and he's in the hot seat. P1. Can he do it? We will see in just a few corners' time. Looks pretty dead set. Unless he gets a puncture and something awful happens, I don't see it being an issue. Michael Malik goes into the pit lane, so what's happened to him on the final lap? Unless that's his manual Oh that's his mandatory oh, stop. Yes, so mandatory, yeah. yeah. So Manchester will for now take that place back. Mantas is starting to drift. Well, that's a risk. Oh no. <laughs> Not on the rear tires, I suppose. Uh, the problem isn't on the rear tires, but yeah, he's he's now flourishing oh, to the finish already. Yeah. And Tamir will definitely be happy to see this because he just gets the checkered flag immediately so he'll be classified fifth but here we go it is mantas the hat trick hero unless something extraordinary uh, happens with the fastest lap there we go one more slide just for good measure and he has won it in one hour 17 minutes and 33 seconds everybody brilliant stuff absolutely epic ricardo um will take p2 today joe holmes evicted from the race due to a crash in the chicane and it's Rick Cardle who will take P2 Jordan Lavrikov well deserved P3 uh, only a couple of seconds behind in the end um, very nice stuff to our podium there um, but Mantas what a show 17 seconds in the lead um, would have been a little bit more had he not been drifting the final lap um, but that just shows you how much he had in hand and in the end his tyres managed to hold hold it up Unite flourished to the finish as well just off the podium on this instance and um, yeah, managed to managed to drive a good race in the end. As Mantas will make his way around to get to the podium as the rest of the drivers finish, and we'll go through the order. But look at the number of cars that Mantas managed to lap, and uh, you know, just epic. 
Our podium is just after the um, the, pit, the the exit of the chicane. Um, so Mantas will make his way onto the podium. Oh, well, actually he's hit the wall. Um, That's a tight spot, yeah. Yeah, quite tight. <laughs> Roni had to move the podium at late notice, so that's probably why. But there we are, our winner aloft. Yeah, and uh, Roni's rules dictate that because he's been winning so often, he doesn't have the uh, privilege of choosing the next combo um, because Ricardo finished second ahead of Lavrikov, and it is Rick's choice where we go next month. So we'll keep an eye out for his decision when it comes in. But if uh, Leverkov finished second, then yeah, it would have been Rick anyway. Because Leverkov has also given us a choice uh, recently. I think this was his very selection, wasn't it, guys? Uh, Leverkov chose this one, yeah. Yes. So he wasn't allowed to choose again. So no matter what, Rick Cardle has the privilege for next month. Yeah, Rick Cardle's going to take his time to choose. We're not going to be able to find out from him what he's going to pick on the broadcast, unfortunately. He's, he said he wants time to think. So that's fair enough. That's fair enough. But anyway, in... Uh, what is it? 1 hour 17.33 is what uh, Owen said to us before. That is the time in which Mantas has won uh, tonight's race. Ahead of Rick Cardle, Jordan Lavrikov uh, takes the final step on the podium. A very deserving podium there. Unite just off with the Mooley, Twin Cam, Oscar, Koivinen, Manchester, and Motten McCarry. Our final finishes were Lorenzo, Roni, Yarikatilla, Magic, Michael Malik, Timmy Soini, Adam Baderuk, and Spider Man, with Stiefler and Joe Holmes uh, DNFing on our first page of results, unfortunately. And Zesty136 and Gabor not making it to the end either. And Mantas did do the triple. He gets the fastest lap as well with a 10961. Boys, that was exciting. I really enjoyed that. It was guaranteed to be fun. The LX6 at South City, never a disappointing combination. Oh, for, for sure, yeah, it lived up to the hype, and yeah, the challenge was met by some very brave drivers, and I have to give them all their credit. Uh, if they didn't come forward, then it would have been a, a less uh, enjoyable opportunity to see the LX6 in action, but yeah, we got a load of competitors, and we saw the uh, top uh, four contenders, plus Joe, of course, uh, commiserations to him, uh, they put the car through its paces. And of course, the drivers uh, fifth through tenth are really, really good as well. So congratulations to them. Yeah, I got to say, I'm a bit surprised, even though I shouldn't be, uh, that Mandas took this one as well. Like, is there just no one who can stop Mandas now? Like, the, the man has been so crazy this whole year. Uh, like, I love to see him being so strong. But, well, uh, Joe Holmes gave it a good try. Uh, stayed very close to uh, the Mandas for long until the, he ended up in the wall but anyway uh, the race was exciting and the tight situation was uh, quite surprising as well <laughs> well enjoyable race to say the least yeah thanks for your thoughts guys that was that was pretty cool and uh, we're going to be doing it all again next month once rick cardle decides on the uh, the combo the 89th rtfr xl will take place on the 14th of may same time, same place. It's been great to have you both with me. And thanks to Chris as well in our ears. Kept him busy tonight, didn't we, gents? Uh, looking in the replays to find out where people crashed. But um, good to have a team effort once again. Yep, thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Don't forget, it's MRC E-Challenge this Sunday. We implore you to sign up and join in with the fun for E-Challenge. It's a, an epic series. It deserves um, big grids for that one, I think. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you there. And we hope to see you in the other races we have coming on as well. We've got Fox Friday uh, on Friday the what is it? Friday the nineteenth of April at Fern Bay Green Reversed. Um, so that will be a good one as well. So from all of us here at Sim Broadcast, we hope you have a great rest of your evening, and we'll see you later in the week, gents. It was a pleasure, and yeah, what it, round out your thoughts for tonight? Uh, yeah, it was the case of the top drivers going. Uh, as hard as they possibly could without uh, putting their car in danger. And then we saw plenty of good strategy work as well. So that, that was a, a good balance to RT4 race, uh, in my opinion. Uh, well, I pretty much said everything I had to say. Uh, just glad to see so many uh, drivers handling their uh, channels so well. Uh, it's, it's a difficult car to drive and a very difficult track to do it with. 
So, uh, well done everyone who finished the race and uh, that was some nice racing. It was indeed. Thanks again, boys, and we'll see you all next time. For all of us here at Sim Broadcast, have a great evening. Good night. Good night. Bye.